reality shows. I'm honoured that after starting his talk, he drew back the curtains and has joined me at Talk Radio as any dream will do. I'm delighted to welcome to Talk Radio, Joe McEldry. Fabulous work. Did you like that? Yeah, I did. That was very good. It was the most creative and inclusive of all of my work. That's you know, what I will I, see. I wanted to say, like, Joe, we're not going to go and sit through your Wikipedia page. Instead, I'm just going to give you all your shows in one sentence. Perfectly done. Thank you. Perfectly and done. Can we just talk about your son? You look amazing today. Oh, really? Have you lost some weight? Normally when people tell you... I, I never like it when somebody says you look well. Mm. Do you know what I hate is when the people go, you've grown. Yeah, what or you, you look... What do you mean you've grown? Oh, you look really healthy. In the first couple of weeks, normally when I start a show, you always drop a little bit of weight. And then after about four weeks, your body gets used to the show. And then if you're eating and your body's used to the show, then that's when you start piling on the pounds. And what about in the interval? Because as an audience, when we go off for 20 minutes and to get a drink from the bar and there's a massive queue, what do you do? I normally I have a quick change, so I have to have an outfit change, and I normally have a black coffee. Okay. Yeah, that's my... I normally have one about half an hour before the... I love that you're asking all of these things. It's a, that's all I actually want to know. What do you do in the interval? What am I doing? What, if I'm going to Kinky Boots tonight, I'm like, yeah. when the show's on, right, and let's say you're... Um, not you're in Joseph, but... It doesn't feature you for five minutes. What are you doing backstage? Well, in Joseph, I normally have a lot of quick changes in terms of costume changes. So I'll be with somebody who works in the wardrobe department and we'll be doing all the mic changes and the belts and everything. But then sometimes you can literally... I mean, with something like Joseph, we do it ten times a week. It's so set in your body that you can almost just switch on and off as soon as you go on and off stage. Well, you know, I sometimes have my laptop on and I'm watching series, Netflix series and stuff. I, I certainly just sit in my dressing room and have a drink. I, in Joseph, I have time to sit down in between scenes. In my show, I don't have time. I have to get changed and my concerts are pretty full on. I'm on stage the whole time, so it's not as easy in that. Ah, well, let's talk about that show. I love the title, Saturday Night at the Movies Live. Yeah. So you're on a 30-day tour. You've already started. You've done uh, three dates so far. How yeah. are you finding it? It's great. Um, you never know how people are going to react to the show. You know, we plan all these things in rehearsals and then you don't really get a feel for it until you get in front of an audience. But everybody seems to love it. Um, the feedback's been great. The audience has been wonderful. But I mean, you know, we're performing all songs that people love, you know, all of those kind of all time iconic hits. Don't want to miss a thing, no matter what. Everything I do, I do it for you. Daydream Believer. You've got lovers all around. You've got all of them songs that people can just join in. Perfect concert songs. And are people on their feet right from the beginning to right at the end? Yeah, uh, it's funny. Um, people, you kind of get a mixture of both. Some people then think with the type of songs, certainly the ballads, people just enjoy to just sit and listen. Mm. And, and Actually take it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the up-tempo ones, I always say, come on, if you want to get up and dance, please do. Don't feel like... Because I think now, for some reason recently of, of late, I think people are very conscious of being in an audience. I always like the audience to feel relaxed, and I always like them to feel like they're in control, because if they feel like they're in control of it and they can just enjoy it, then they relax more and you get a better reaction from them. Do you know what, it's so interesting you say that, and it's one of those things I think we as an audience forget about the stars on the actual stage, because it's, a lot of times it's like, I want to get up and dance. I, was, I saw Greece and I wanted to get up, but no one was up other than one woman right at the front, and it was like, yeah. okay, She's up, let's wait for the woman on the left to get up, well, and then yeah. everyone will get us up. Yeah, people get really self-conscious. So I always see it on stage, pretty early on in the show, I'm like, guys, if you want to get up, get up. Don't wait for anyone else. If, if you want to have a good time, you have a good time. What is it about the stage that you like? Is it that you like to blag it and you can ad-lib and it's just you, yourself, on a stage? Because I'd get quite, like, self-conscious of well, what that's eyes on me. Well, that's like, that for, for, for me, standing on stage with me band and performing, and being able to sing my stuff that I've recorded and stuff is, is, is really special. But, you know, it's exactly what I do and stand on stage and see on stage is exactly the same as you You would just come in here every day mm. and, you know, you would you would say something that maybe you hadn't planned to say, but you just, you're in your own work environment, so it's, you trust it, you know? And I have a whole team of people that work with me, that have worked with me for, God, four or five years now, and we've done at least 700 shows together. You know, that goes from sound to light and to band, everything. And they, we all know how each other work. We all know how to deal with things. And at the end of the day, it's supposed to be fun. You know, if something goes wrong, I'm always one that I highlight the problem and I say, guys, you know, we're having a bit of a technical issue. Um, and if you involve the audience, you make them feel part of it. That's that, that, you know, they get something that the show the night before didn't get, you know. And it's all about just making it a part of the show. Well, you've met, over that time, so many massive stars. I mean, you are a massive star, Joe, but you've met some real icons. I will get the head out of the door now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've met some real icons. You've the late George Michael and the late Whitney Houston. I've yes. seen your X-Factor days. It's interesting to 
see how those kind of people work. You know, when you see people as legendary and as iconic as that, and you see how they are behind the scenes and things, um, it's interesting to see, you know, and, and it's also interesting. I, I find it fascinating how some people can cope with that level of success and some people can't. Mm. It's, I find that really interesting. I, I study all of that. And he was a very, very humble man, but openly said he struggled with the whole fame thing and the press and the intrusion. And then you look at somebody like Whitney Houston who had everything and somehow just couldn't seem to get it together in her latter days. And it, I find that really sad. You said you have your safety net on stage, your band, uh, etc. Would you ever consider doing a film? You know, Harry Styles obviously done Dunkirk. Would you ever go and do the big screen where you don't have that safety net of people around you that you necessarily trust? Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I'm up for any kind of challenge. If it's something that I think I can do a good job of or at least give it a good go, then I'm more than happy to try it. Um, I have to see if I get offered one. Let's see how well you know your fans because my Twitter has gone into meltdown recently. <laughs> I did a little tweet, an innocent tweet, saying, oh, Jamie Card is going to have a show tonight. The amount of people who have tweeted me. So, I'm sorry for everyone who hasn't got that question asked, but I've got a couple for you. So, let's see what, how you do. Megan Nevar says, how do you wind down after each show? Sometimes I've got loads of energy and you just have to sit up and kind of chat and chill out. You know, put your PJs on and chill out. We're quite lucky this year, we're on a bus, um, so we're doing a lot of overnight drives. So, you know, you can kind of go to bed at any point while you're travelling. Um, or sometimes I literally come off stage and I'm like, shower, bed, sleep. It's one extreme or the other. I've either got loads of energy or I just crash out and I'm fast asleep. At Lady Debbington and Joy ask, is there another musical you'd like to do? I think it's definitely something I'm going to look into. I've had so much fun with Joseph. It's about what would work and what's right. I think with, 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 with part, you've got to pick the right part. I want to see you as Tevye in Fiddle on the Roof. Oh, really? I think you'd be quite good at that. Very different, very diverse, but different. I think oh, you'd be doing well that. I'll suggest that to be manager. You do that. Um, <laughs> You'll get the commission for that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't you worry, I'll be sending my invoice in. <laughs> That's Easy Love Joe 91 says, where is your most favourite holiday destination? Um, God, I mean, I've been to quite a lot of places. I've been very lucky. Um, I went to Croatia recently and that was beautiful. Where about did you go? I went to Split. Not too bad. Did you go over to Havar? Yeah, uh, we did like a boat trip over to Havar. At the W underscore one says, how do you take a song and make it your own? I think by not thinking about it too much. You know, if you uh, people make such a big deal about like this whole like, oh my god, you're covering that song, like, you know. If you just actually don't think about it and if you just go into the studio and sing it how you would normally sing a song that you'd written, it, it, that, that is how you do it, you know. Um, I try not to listen to the original versions too much, I think, because you don't want it to be a copycat version. Um, and I try not to be too clever with it. I just sing it how it would nat how it would naturally sit in my voice and add a few ad-libs on it. And I think by doing that, you don't take it too much away from the original, but you also don't spoil the original as well. At Rosie Cohen says, have you met Baby Bear? So that's Cheryl and uh, Liam's Baby Bear. Um, no, I haven't. <laughs> At Janine Bootcut says, what is your favourite track from the album? I love I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. I've got a couple of favourites. I love Love Never Dies. Brilliant. Well, you can see Joe McAlgy all around the UK at SaturdayNightTour.com. Across the UK on 91.9.